you gonna need three, four hands when they my butt. Porch at first. That shit happened, Troy and Vaughn. What the niggas jumped off head first, and when they did, they jumped off at a at a higher level, more aggressive than the who was around or was. Vaughn was just a he was a different individual, bro. He was just he was many. He was, you know what I'm saying? Shorty was crazy. He was on that. He was, you know what I'm saying? What's wrong with him. That's not human, man. You're not regular, man. Devil, man. <laughs> that nigga was the devil, man. For yeah. real. That nigga was the devil. Man. They don't understand that. The police been move on. Hey, y'all. Folks, them T Roy and Vaughn. And, and yeah. But now, man, Vaughn. Like, yeah, you really couldn't, when he started doing the way he was doing, hell nah, you really couldn't, you know, couldn't get around folks unless you was doing that act, cause he was sliding, he was a slider, bro. Bro was crazy, so yeah, he was a slider. And like, he just walked up to me like, man, he like, hood, look straight. I'm like, like, he don't look at me, look straight. I'm like, okay. He, boy, why well, I just ran up on that bitch, K.I. I was just ran up on them and K.I. called K.I., she's the last one coming out the gate. Who on God, I'm OD Soul. Boss Trail is folks' work. Like, stop that. Like, yeah. that was folks' work. He did that before he even went to school. What you like him? Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. We knew King Von was a real one, but what we didn't know was that he was an alleged serial disguised as a rapper. His body's a legendary, and even his ops tell of how savage he was. Now, law officials are releasing documents detailing even more hits that may have been pinned to King Von. He lived, ate, and slept with catching the ops on his mind. Early morning, late night, Von was catching bodies on sight, allegedly. Those around him call him many things, but one thing they all agree on is he was about that life. Why? We're going to find out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Chicago was mainly considered the home of drill. From Chief Keith to Lil Durk to the late FBG Duck, the wave of disrespect to their ops became like a game. But legends speak of the birth of a super savage every 10,000 years. With the trenches in his blood genetically enhanced for drilling, their hearts hold no remorse. Their mind designed to think of ways to catch the ops lacking and to survive. 10,000 years passed and the next super duper savage entered the world. His name, Davon Daquan Bennett, also known as King Von. Bro came up out the womb ready to stretch something and he lived up to all the legends spoke of as a super duper savage. He had to growing up in Chicago. His motto from small was Merc or be murked and by his reputation, it's clear he chose one of those. Von was beating cases and turning them into tales in his music, playing right in his ops faces. Oh boy, what the f I'm known for? Call the body, beat that body, catch some more. Vaughn would tweet about shootings and murking ops like it was his favorite pastime. And the crazy thing is, it wasn't cap, it was truth. Twitter was like his obituary diary where he detailed the most evil thoughts and documented the ops he caught. Vaughn was a different breed. His mind was infatuated with the drilling and survival. And what's wild is that he could be cold and devious, but be so cool and chill. That's why he considered one of them ones. Being around Vaughn, he was always on go time according to his homie Tay 600 and Jay Hood. You couldn't be around Vaughn if you didn't want to get into shootouts because it was green light no matter the time of day. Vaughn was gonna always stretch something if he had to. If you was hanging with Vaughn, you had to accept everything that came with Vaughn. You had to accept that you was gonna be in shooting. You accept that he, it was gonna be that and you had to be with it, you feel me? With Vaughn, you feel me? And this was a lot of the time Everybody didn't want to hang with him, they couldn't, because you had to be on what he was on. A lot of people wanted to know what Vaughn was on, because Vaughn was like that, you feel me? He was sliding on the ops like he was the national old block ice skating champ. Like, yeah, you really couldn't, when he started doing what he was doing, hell nah, you really couldn't, you know, couldn't get around folks unless you was doing that act, because he was sliding, he was a slider, bro. Bro was crazy, so yeah, he was a slider, that nigga. This wasn't just Vaughn in the trenches. This was also Vaughn after he built the buzz in the music biz. Word on the street is Vaughn even used to be robbing people he just kicked it with on camera while going to interviews with Durkio. Dude was really just always scheming to catch something lacking. What you know gonna get on and still be robbing? They doing interviews, he'll rob the interviewer after they done interviewing. Yeah, I don't know that like when Durkio put, when folks was first getting on, he's in Atlanta robbing everybody. Bro, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Dirk could be doing an interview. Don't get your way caught in the elevator by folks. And he gonna do that. All that. It's like that. He couldn't stop it. 
Rappers be on the internet talking tough, maybe have a little run with an op here and there. With Vaughn, once it was up, it was up. Dude was getting up at sunrise, waking homies up, talk about we on, like catching the op was breakfast or something. He wanna wake me up. 8 a.m. Come on. He gone. What are we doing? <laughs> Yo, Vaughn not having regular dreams. This having straight nightmares and one-on-one -on -one sessions with the devil, bro. Then they wake up and be like, yo, let's go. By all accounts, those who knew him said one thing in common about bro. He was trained to go. That's what I'm saying, man. Shorty was the best. He was something was wrong with him. That's not human, man. You're not regular, man. This nigga was the devil, man. <laughs> that nigga was the devil, man. For mm. real, man. That nigga was the devil, man. The legend states that in order for the super duper savage to become a demon, he must first experience an event, a trigger that causes him to dive off the porch head first. For King Von, that moment was allegedly when O.D. Perry got murked. Porch at first. That shit happened, Troy and Von. What the niggas jumped off head first, and when they did, they jumped off at a at a higher level, more aggressive than the niggas who was around or was. Von unlocked his inner savage, and from there, it was all smoke, racking up body counts like it was arcade tickets to win the prize. Soon, the rumors of his notoriety started getting out. The names of the ops he took out started being called and began to unfold to the public. And needless to say, Von was a cap about what the streets were saying. Everything he portrayed to be and rapped about, he stood on. On October 2012, Von put in some work for his gang taking out an op. His name, Richard Modell, also known as Modell of STL slash EBT. According to reports, Modell was leaking up with a shorty on her porch when Von walked up and opened fire, murking Modell and leaving his cousin in a wheelchair after he was hit up so many times his stomach was open. Von entered into his obituary diary, mocking Modell after snatching his soul. Von was still hungry for more. Bro couldn't even wait until things calmed down. That same month after Merck and Modell, he spun the block again allegedly, this time catching P5 of Gyro City lacking. Official news reports state that Derek Jackson, also known as P5, was hit up multiple times before succumbing to his injuries. According to the incident report, P5 was hit in the neck, chest, back, right hand, left jaw, and everything. And just like that, P5 became a new addition into the obituary diary. Von was recording hits like it was an episode in the show talk about who gonna get murked in November, leaving fans with a cliffhanger. November came, and we got the answer. Rodney Stewart, also known as Boss Trail of STL EBT. His hit came just two days before his ticket to get out of the rack to start a new life in Iowa away from the paranoia and gang lifestyle. Boss Trail was found face down in the alley in the 2600 block of West 83rd Street with a shot to the back of the head. It's rumored that a shorty was used to lure Boss Trail to the alley where instead he met with T-Roy who ended him. But Jay Hood allegedly clears the air and gives the credit of the shooting to King Von, the other half of the twin demons with T-Roy. Listen to his raps. Like, he was really, like, telling y'all what he was doing and, like, how he go, like, he had changed his shoes, he catch it before he even hit school. Like, like he called Trail. Some he was on my podcast telling me he ain't, boy, on God, on OD Soul. False Trail is folks' work. Like, stop that. Like, yeah. The song J-Hood was referring to the speaking on the Merc and the Boss Trail was King Von's track GTA, another insert of the obituary diary. In May 2014, a man by the name of Malcolm Stuckey was next. King Von and affiliate Michael Wade, also known as Big Mike, caught bro lacking at a birthday party in the 5700 block of South LaSalle Street around Inglewood and did him in. This would be a hit that got both him and Von took to jail. Von beat the body, and when Malcolm's sister heard the news, she had to get a lot off her chest, and you can't really blame her. Her brother ain't coming back, and Von was out having a successful rap career, rapping about his dirt that he did in the streets. Two things about Vaughn, he was always wanting the op smoked and he never forgot an op that disrespected him. K.I., the legendary female assassin of STL EBT, was poking at Vaughn for losing two of his friends while he was locked up. Well, Vaughn was out and get back season was in. On April 11th, 2014, Vaughn along with another O Block member made their move after K.I. posted up her location on Twitter. Her confidence was high, but King Von's was higher. She was allegedly with her right-hand man and homie Butter. 
When Vaughn pulled up and offloaded shots, hitting K.I. in the mouth, neck, and chest a total of nine times on the 6400 block of South Eberhardt Avenue. Eyewitnesses state that K.I. ran and collapsed on the porch fighting for her life. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started f***ing. K.I. was succumbing to her injuries at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Jay Hood later did an interview with Fuchsia's TV confirming it was Vaughn that murked K.I. And not only that, he said after Vaughn did it, he told him what was up. Ran up on K.I. called K.I. She was the last one coming out the gate. Literally. If them niggas that was with her that day, Y'all know who y'all was when y'all was with her when y'all, when he ran up on y'all, when she was the last one coming out that gate. Those are the ops that Von Carr lacking you'd hear mostly about. But before now, many of them have been word on the streets and people trying to piece together how many lives the demon took. Well now, the police have started providing evidence of Von's hits and it's crazy how much dirt he did allegedly. You know you want demon time when the police are investigating you for multiple hits. K.I.'s was one of the first they released documents on confirming it was Vaughn's handiwork. Here's how sinister the man was, allegedly. There was an official K.I. documentary where they were trying to piece together who murked her, and Vaughn was on that joint doing interviews and talking about how he was trying to smash and be with her. It's all over with. I'm going to get up in you or something. Does that sound about right? <laughs> That's something. That sound wrong, so yeah, I'll be saying wrong. Yeah, I probably did say that. Vaughn had interviewers talking about Vaughn was hurt, missing her, and tweeting about her. And Vaughn hyping him up with the trolling, acting all in his feelings. Dude was really unremorseful up in the score. Documents would also be released on Modell, where investigators pinned Vaughn as the one who ended his life. Two confirmed hits by law officials, and we thought that was all. But they released more documents recently that really showed the level of the operation Vaughn was on when it came to catching his ops. Vaughn was moving like a mob boss orchestrating homicides because in these new documents they claim Vaughn was the one behind Carlton Weekly, aka FBG Duck's hit. Documents state that he put a 50k bag on Duck's head, then upped it to 100k and when the homies collected on the bounty after Merc and Duck, he bought each of them O-Block chains. Peep the video of Vaughn at the icebox linking the chains. Here's some of the names he called to be engraved on the chain. See, locked up for FBG Ducks hit. Yeah, um, just, I want to know yeah, the name. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Muwap locked up for FBG Ducks hit. Muwap. So it seems that the reports may be telling the truth. Everybody getting a chain is now locked up. You know, it would seem Vaughn was on the warpath to murk as many ops as he could, and he dang sure was accomplishing his goal, as we know. Vaughn met his end after an altercation with Quando Rondo outside a club in Atlanta where Quando homie Lil Tim pulled out the strap and hit him up. From the looks of things, if he didn't lose his life, many things could have happened. He could have took off and really took over the game. He could have been behind bars, or he could have just overall made a change in his life. There's no way to really say. But me personally, I feel like he was going to make a change for the better. And you could almost see it a little bit before he passed. It's like... Even now with the information coming out from the cops and stuff like that, you gotta take it with a grain of salt because this all could be an intricate character assassination of a man that's no longer here to defend himself. Vaughn is rumored to be behind more hits and I won't be surprised if investigators release more info on other hits that he's responsible for allegedly. And if any of this is true, one thing's for sure, there may never be another one like King Vaughn. He was like, always just getting out of jail you feel me so it's like every time he get out it's like we get right back to what we was on you feel me it's like he wasn't even just in jail like he get right out of jail to, to mouth every time for us like he know he finna go back to jail or something so he just trying to do as much shit as he can until next time stay smart stay alert and stay real i'm out y'all